Uh, hello and welcome to Open Logic. This is System Verilog in 5 minutes. In this video, we'll talk about fixed size array. There are two bytes, B0 and B1, in this simple code. In the initial block, they are set to 0 and 1 respectively. The same code can be written with one array variable instead of two different bytes. In this case, the array size is 2 and every byte can be accessed using square bracket and index. Note that the square bracket here is for size and the square bracket here is for index. Here it means the size is 2, index that 0 and 1. And here it means we want to access the element at index 0. We can provide an array value to an array variable straight away without having to modify its element one by one. Array value is indicated by an apostrophe and a pair of curly braces. The example on the right achieves the same effect as the example on the left. We can also use for loop to modify elements of an array. The for loop here uses a counter i to count from 0 to 1, and the counter is used as an index to access the array element. You can see that the counter is put to stop if it increments to 2. The 2 here represents the size of the array. It is hard-coded and therefore is not the best practice. We can use a system function called $size to query the size of an array. In this case, it would return 2. Up until now, we have evolved this code several times. They all work in the same manner, but this one here is a scalable one. Imagine that you need 10 bytes instead of 2. For the code on the left, you will need to add 8 more variables, and then you need to modify the initial block accordingly. But for the code on the right, you only need to modify the size of the array. Even better, if you use parameter on the array, the whole code becomes truly configurable and scalable. Now, there is a new syntax in system variable called for each. If you are familiar with Pro, you would have known this. Anyway, the code at the left has an explicitly declared counter i, and you need to specify how to count, such as the end condition and the increment method. With for each loop, it is simpler because the counter is implicit and the loop will simply go through all elements one by one. An array can be packed or unpacked. These are three individual bits, b0, b1, and b2. This is an array of bits with the size of 3, and this is an unpacked array. If you put the square bracket with the type instead of with the variable, it will create a packed array. This is the same concept as you've already learned from structure, where the bits are concatenated together to form a larger size variable. Except that in array, it doesn't need the keyword packed. The same concept can be applied to other types of variable. The only gacha is that in this case, byte cannot be packed. Only single bit vector can be packed. For example, bit, logic, reg, and wire. An array can also be of little endian or big endian. This is the little endian style and it is pretty common. You can reverse the order of the index and create a big endian array. You can also create an array by simply providing a size number instead of a range. This is how C programming does it and it is the same as a big endian style. You already know that you can assign one element to another. Be aware that the number 1 here means index while the number 3 here means size. You can also assign the whole array to another. You can even assign slices of array instead of the whole array. The only rule you need to follow is that the size must match. For that, you can even assign a big endian array to a little endian one. Although you need to be careful about that because the index is reversed. We can create a multi-dimensional arrays as well. These three examples here are all two bytes. The first example is purely unpacked, the last one is purely packed, and the middle one is a hybrid. For two-dimensional array, you need two for loops to go through every element. Remember the for each loop that we have discussed earlier, it can support multi-dimensional arrays in a shorter manner. The for each loop here is equivalent of the two for loops here. In summary, arrays provide a scalable solution to creating variables, which is important for a configurable and reusable design and validation environment. Alright, that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Do support by clicking like, share, and subscribe.